This is Smiles TV. <music>
step for me at first, you know, so it was, it was a faith move uh, to take on the awesome responsibility because it is not uh, something that should be taken lightly. I read recently that you were appointed to the governor-elect's um, new task force. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that and how being on such a task force can help you do things within the community. Well, I was, and I'm just greatly honored, of course, uh, to be selected to serve on the governor's job creation and economic development uh, transition committee. Um, you know the city of East St. Louis is, has been working uh, for the past three years to st strategically position itself, um, of course, for job creation and economic development. So, mm -hmm. of course, any voice that we can have um, that will aid us in, in, in promoting uh, job creation, economic development in the city, we're, we're excited to do. Um, but more importantly, what I'm most excited about is the relationships mm -hmm. uh, that we are developing you know, on those levels, federal, state, local, public, and private. Why? Because in order for us to progressively move forward as a city, we need to have very positive and strong relationships, and we need to have the ear you know, of these legislators who are making um, decisions for municipalities like East St. Louis. Let me tell you a very brief story. I remember one day I was in Save a Lot here in East St. Louis. And I looked around at um, the individuals there, and just so happened that day, I didn't have much money with me. And I looked at everybody else's face, and it appeared that there was some lack of hope in the faces. One push that you have is called restoration of hope. Tell us about that and how that um, actually is, is being done. When I, when I came on um, as a council person, one of the things that I recognized and really realized and felt, as you have uh, stated so eloquently, was the lack of hope that seemed to exist in the city of East St. Louis. Not from everybody, mm -hmm. but from a, a, a good majority of, of our people. And, you know, the thought came to me that we really need to work to restore hope in the city of East St. Louis. But then how does restoring hope, what does that look like? What is, how do you, how do you get people, uh, how do you help mm -hmm. to restore hope? Well, I think uh, one of the first things that you can do to help to restore hope is to, um, is to empower, um, to educate, and to hold accountable. At the same time, to engage the citizens on a, on a grassroots level. So we came up with uh, an initiative called Restoration of Hope that was designed to bring uh, leadership myself, city, uh, together with the citizens and also our corporate citizens and engaging them on um, small projects. Mm. Um, why engaging on small projects? Well, when we come together to work together and we achieve um, a common goal, then that helps to get uh, mobilization going, it, it, it gets engagement going, and then, you know, when you accomplish something, it gives a sense of pride and accomplishment, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, with the Restoration of Hope, our first project that we worked on was the Welcome Sign area. And I, I felt like that, that had to be the first initial project. Why? Because it's the entrance to our city, it's the face of our city, it had welcome to the city of champions, mm -hmm. um, but yet the area didn't look like a city of champions, right? We had overgrown grass mm -hmm. in the area. Um, you know, we need, there was a need for a new sign. Um, at night, the lighting on the sign was out, you know? So we looked at that area and we said, we need to start right here. We need to start right here. So we, we were able to partner with um, some of our corporate citizens, um, Amron, to help to restore the light to the sign. Good. We had um, a new sign um, put in that was donated. You know, different color, a brighter color. Color used to be blue. We turned it to red. Same message, welcome to the City of Champions, because we are- But it just a had a facelift. Just a facelift. Um, we were able to put new side down in the, in the roundabout area, and we partnered with citizens um, just all around. It helped to um, bring about a sense of community again in a city that's um, large enough, but small enough to still have that community 
feel? One thing that I've noticed in addition is how um, you have started town hall meetings Absolutely. where you actually go to the community and you hear the concerns of the citizens and you relate. How was that concept develop, developed and have you seen any positive things come out of those meetings? Absolutely. Um, well, again, that concept uh, fell under the umbrella of restoring hope. In order for uh, that hope to be restored, I just felt the need to have more engagement and one-on-one uh, -on -one connection and contact with citizens. So we came up with the idea of having uh, town hall meetings in, in the different areas and locations of the city because oftentimes we may not get uh, the participation of citizens in the committee or the council meetings, they may not be able to make it. But the idea was to go out into the community to take um, information from the government out into the community, but not only uh, present information, but get feedback mm. from the citizens and to let them know in the, uh, in, with the idea of being a transparent government right, that we talked about. I talked about being transparent and being accountable and letting citizens know that we, we don't have a problem engaging. That's we good. don't have a problem answering questions. We don't have a problem addressing issues and or conflict. That's excellent. Um, looking at all the things that you're doing to reach individuals and to reach the community at large, what things are you doing on a bigger scale? Because, you know, we need economic development. Absolutely. In our community, um, we need to see businesses come in. What kinds of things are you putting in place to effect a change in that direction? Okay, so well, the re recently the city uh, applied for Opportunity Zones. The city was awarded five Opportunity Zones. And tell us, what does the Opportunity Zone mean? The Opportunity Zones creates opportunities for developers to develop in a city like East St. Louis. And that's that from has, the federal government? That's from the state. From the state, okay, go that's ahead. Right. Uh, and the federal is a part of it as well, but the governor mm. has to award in the state the different areas for the uh, Opportunity Zones. Okay. So the governor awarded East St. Louis five Opportunity Zones, and it, it just gives um, developers um, tax write-offs for investing I see. Um, in areas like East St. Mm -hmm. Louis. I'll so we've done that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I have noticed, um, too, and I, I don't know if I said this before, and I may say it over and over, mm -hmm. Um, you've worked hard at bringing our crime down. Um, how will that impact um, the view of outsiders? Or, or what other things are you doing um, in terms of getting that crime down even more? Absolutely. So um, we just learned recently, based off of the information that our chief has gathered, that our, our crime is down 42 percent. That is which is that is large. Which That's is a, which is huge. Yes. Um, the city of East St. Louis is be, being very proactive in, in uh, stabilizing um, our community so that it can be a safe place. We recently met with a group to have collab collaborative conversations about crime in the city of East St. Louis. We did that meeting on October 30th. Mm -hmm. We had a very good discussion and one of the things that came out of the discussion, the number one thing that um, the citizens and interested parties talked about was lighting. And so uh, we took, we heard that and we uh, addressed it immediately. And so now we have, uh, we're restoring lighting in uh, our main thoroughfares uh, on Collinsville Avenue, for example. We have restored all the lighting, all the restoration of lighting is complete from State Street to, to Broadway. That is now complete. Um, on State Street, we're currently working on renewing the lighting from 49th and State to Collinsville Avenue. Right. Um, we have a work going on on Broadway as well. Um, but we're working um, to replace lights that belong to the city. We are also partnering with Ameren, and we're in conversations with Ameren, who has been a very good partner with the city of East St. Louis in restoring um, the lights that belong to Ameren. So it is about partnerships. Mm -hmm. It is about working together, pulling our resources together to make our city safe. So, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but something I noticed I really want you to elaborate on. Sure. I saw major demolition going on in our community. Mm -hmm. I saw um, Clark Junior High School coming down. Tell us how you were able to work 
with others to get that done. We, we partnered with Better Family Life to demolish several homes in the Olivet Park area. Mm -hmm. uh, we partnered with St. Clair County um, to demolish um, Clark Junior High School. Um, again, I cannot stress the importance of these partnerships and pulling together the resources to make sure um, that we have a clean and safe city. We have to, we have to do this basic groundwork um, and it is preparatory work for the development that needs to take place in East St. Louis. So we are being very proactive in our approach by uh, clearing the land, demolishing the, the, the properties that need to be demolished, lighting up East St. Louis so that we can see, so that we can help each other to be accountable for our city. Tell you what, our city manager has come in. Absolutely. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit further with both of you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to go away. We have a dynamic broadcast. Um, we are sitting here with East St. Louis Mayor Emika Jackson Hicks. And now um, joining us on the next segment is going to be the city manager, Daphne Moore. We have a lot of more information to share. Stay tuned for more smiles. You are invited to join R89 Blocks. East St. Louis School District 189 invites you to become a part of the Urban Education Teacher Residency Program. You can earn $30,000 and receive supportive training, secure an Illinois teacher's license, obtain a master's degree, and transform lives. Contact East St. Louis School District 189 for more information. While you're at it, don't miss School District 189's Recruitment Fair. The Recruitment Fair will be held on March 23rd from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. All kinds of positions are available. That's right, come out and learn how to become a part of the 89 Blocks. The recruitment fair will be held on Saturday, March 23rd from 9 to 12 noon. An array of positions are available. East St. Louis, Illinois, my hometown, and I'm sitting here with two individuals who are also from East St. Louis, Illinois. They're making remarkable differences in our community. I'm sitting here with Emika Jackson Hicks, our mayor and the city manager, Daphne Moore. Thank you both again. And Ms. Thank Moore, you. it's a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I told you you were going to smile before, <laughs> <laughs> before this was all over. You know, we've been talking with the mayor and she's laid out quite a bit in terms of what's going on in the community, in terms of our crime is mm -hmm. down, um, we're bringing in businesses and things of that nature where we're paving the way for businesses. But before we get into the meat of the conversation, if you will, just share with our audience a little bit about your background. I told them that you're from East St. Louis, but you can tell us a little bit more. Yes, uh, my background is in urban planning and economic development. I worked for the city of St. Louis for 13 years and helped redevelop Arlington Grove uh, near Friendly Temple and a lot of the Chapter 99's Cronulet Park, uh, North Sarah project. I worked on a lot of major projects for the city of St. Louis and then uh, I went on to do economic development for the city of Berkeley and then from there I helped rebuild the city of Delwood after the Ferguson uh, unrest. Wow. So I've done a, a, a lot of different things and I'm excited to be here now helping uh, my hometown redevelop uh, and bring new businesses and just make things better for the citizens. I saw a recent video of you. Um, you received an award or some acknowledgments for such work that you just described. What was that um, video about? Uh, the video uh, was about, uh, of course, my life work that I've done and uh, just a goal of redeveloping black communities. Uh, the YWCA uh, actually uh, honored me for their leadership launching for 2018 and I'm, it was a very uh, humbling moment and um, we just talked about uh, my passion for community and uh, just wanting to help our people. So now you're here, you're back home, you're in East St. Louis, you're working with our mayor, um, and we're under the city council form of government. If you will, both of you, just take a little bit and, and tell our public what does it mean to be under that type of administration? Well, the, under the council management form of government in, in the city of East St. Louis, we have uh, five council members, uh, including myself. Um, each one of the council members is one-fifth of the council, mm -hmm. which means that we are one-fifth of the vote. Uh, it is the council's responsibility to legislate. Um, each one of our council members chair a specific uh, committee and area. 
Uh, we have one council person that chairs the finance committee. We have one that chairs the community development committee. We have one that chairs the public works committee and one that chairs the public safety committee. Mm -hmm. I, as the uh, chair of the council, do not chair a committee, uh, but I do serve as the chairperson um, for the council, uh, for council meetings. We also have a pro tem. Uh, who is uh, responsible for uh, committee meetings and uh, uh, orchestrating uh, the committee meetings. Under the council management form of government, uh, the city manager is hired uh, by the council members. She has five bosses that she um, has to answer to. And so, uh, as, you, as any city, city manager knows, that can be uh, quite challenging. Uh, but under the city management form of government, legislation is passed by a majority vote. In our case, it's three uh, for majority. Um, in situations where we are amending, for example, the budget or there is land transference, there has to be a majority, super majority vote of five. Um, and under the uh, council management form of government, the city manager runs the day-to-day -day operations of the city. It's my job as mayor to, to, to represent, to be the ambassador, the facilitator, uh, the leader to bring together and to um, you know, initiate uh, legislation as well as with my, my peers, the council, uh, to move the city forward. So city manager, I guess she said it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. okay. No, that, that's, that, that's, that was good because we need to understand because, you know, years ago I did work in an administration and it was not this form of government. So this is different and our people need to understand what, you know, how we operate. So city manager, if you will, we have a list of different things that are going on that are so great in East St. Louis. I'm just going to run off one. What is our connection with the Ameren Project? Something big is happening there. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, Ameren just moved back to East St. Louis in January uh, to the same facility they were in when we were growing up as children. And they have their operations um, based out of the East St. Louis office, which helps most of Southern Illinois. So anything uh, uh, in the metropolitan area uh, is based out of here. So anytime there's a crisis and different things of that nature uh, they're coming to East St. Louis to do business and that was a 10 million dollar project. Tell us a little bit about this East St. Louis Proud initiative. I've been hearing about it, I've been seeing it all over the place, Facebook, all social media, um, the business owners are talking about it. Tell our audience about the East St. Louis Proud initiative. The East St. Louis Proud Initiative actually falls under the umbrella of Restoration of Hope. Okay. It is another arm of the Restoration of Hope, and this arm is, is business inclusive because it is designed um, to promote uh, economic uh, support of our businesses, our small businesses who have been here forever. Mm. Um, it's designed to get us as citizens supporting the businesses and investing in those businesses who have invested in this community for years. Um, I, I told and I've had conversations through my town hall meetings with uh, many small, uh, small business owners here in the city of East St. Louis. They are a, they are a key part of, mm -hmm. of job growth in the city of East St. Louis. A lot of our small businesses hire mm -hmm. East St. Louis. Right. So we, um, as a community, want to get behind and support um, our East St. Louis businesses and also to highlight them so that we can know mm -hmm. um, the resources in the form of businesses that we have available in the city of East St. Louis. So it's about restoring hope with our business owners as well, mm -hmm. as we as a community get behind and support those who have supported us for years. Mm -hmm. I have to add that one of the most important things about this choice neighborhood is that again, we bring together the partners within the city in order to make it happen. See, the housing authority can't do it by itself. The city can't mm -hmm. do it by itself. It's about all of the partners, mm -hmm. the school district, the park district, our for-profits, our non-for-profits, mm -hmm. our churches. All of us will play a very key role in the Choice Neighborhood Planning Grant that we are claiming. Mm -hmm. as, we ha <laughs> yes, as we we are. claim the planning portion, we will get the implementation because we are determined yes to develop and grow East St. Louis. You just mentioned Grow East St. Louis, and I don't think we talked about we Grow East St. Louis. So, Miss um, Moore, if you will, elaborate 
real briefly on that. The Grow East St. Louis Fund is a $2 million fund. The city invested 500000 uh, 500, in equity into a program with the National Development Council, which is known as NDC. And it's for our current businesses, and we're looking at entrepreneurship and startup businesses as well. But our current businesses can actually get a loan uh, through that program to uh, help with just about anything. Uh, you know, it, keeping operations going, buying equipment, expanding. So we're really excited about what this uh, fund can do for our current businesses. River Bridge District. I don't want to forget about that. Please share. Well, the River Bridge District uh, was another partnership with St. Clair County and a lot of uh, Casino Queen, Swida, uh, Swida the Illinois uh, American Water. And uh, the project originally was $8 million, but they came in under at $7 million to redevelop Front Street and also redevelop parts of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, Casino Queen put a roundabout in, and the American Water actually spent about $9 million uh, in infrastructure projects to attract business in our riverfront area. I want to thank both of you so much for um, coming to Smile Television Talk Show. And I want to ask you this question. I try to ask as many guests as possible. If you get the chance, will you come back? Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so they're on camera. They said <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to hold them to it. <laughs> this has been so enlightening to me personally, and I hope to our community as well. Thank you for tuning in to Smile Television. And just keep following us. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn. You name it, we're there. We're, all, we're on the National Network, the B. Chapman Network. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last, and Jesus is the Lord. The Lord be magnified. Keep smiling. You look better when you smile. You are invited to join R89 Blocks. East St. Louis School District 189 invites you to become a part of the Urban Education Teacher Residency Program. You can earn $30,000 and receive supportive training, secure an Illinois teacher's license, obtain a master's degree, and transform lives. Contact East St. Louis School District 189 for more information. While you're at it, don't miss School District 189's Recruitment Fair. The Recruitment Fair will be held on March 23rd from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. All kinds of positions are available. That's right, come out and learn how to become a part of the 89 Blocks. The recruitment fair will be held on Saturday, March 23rd from 9 to 12 noon. An array of positions are available. The Smiles Television Talk Show wants to showcase your business, organization, church, and activities. If you have an interest in being a guest on Smiles Television Talk Show, or if you have any show ideas, contact Stephanie Anthony Miles at smilestv777 at gmail.com. You may also call 618-741-3770. Tell your friends to subscribe to the Smiles YouTube channel. Let Smiles TV increase your reach. Remember, you look better with smiles. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Image a nation. Image a world. IDEX Media. Awesome sauce. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs>